So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's class, we are going to talk about the PIB news from 23rd to 25th of December and I hope your preparations for the upcoming RBI grade B examinations are going good and all the very best for that. So let's begin with the very first question and the very first breaking news of today. Actually, it is a breaking news because government ne NFSA ke under jitna bhi ration distribute karti hai, wo bilkul a free kar diya hai with effective from 1st January 2023. Alright, so let's talk about the news. Question padh lete hai, pehle Union Cabinet has decided to provide free food grains to about 81.5 crore beneficiaries under NFSA 2013 as per their entitlement from 1st of January 2023. For how much duration free food grains will be provided to NFSA beneficiaries? Kitne saal ke liye free kiya gaya hai? That is the question. So guys, it is actually a breaking news aur ye un logo ke muh pe bhoat bada tamacha hai jo yoh log ye kehte hai ki global hunger index me hum kuch aisi countries Afghanistan, Bangladesh type hi country se bhi peechhe hai. Right? So now the union cabinet has decided to provide free food grains, absolutely free food grains to up to more than 80 crore beneficiaries under NFSA Act. Thik hai? NFSA Act में तेरा two categories number one is priority households and number two is अंतियोदय अन्न योजना अंतियोदय अन्न योजना households are those who are poorest of poor among the BPL families ठीक है to the priority uh, households five kg uh, per month per person food grain is provided five kg per month per person food grain is provided while to un अंतियोदय अन्न योजना households this Amount of food grain is 35 kg per month per family, right? So this is the difference between the two categories. 35 kg per month per family to Antyodhya Anna Yojana uh, beneficiaries and 5 kg per month per person to priority households. So these are the two categories under NFSM. So before this, in koi minimal charges dene padte the. They had to uh, give the minimal charges to uh, to buy this uh, amount of food grain, but now. This will be absolutely free from 1st of January 2023. And this has been done to remove the financial burden of the poor and the poorest of the poor families which are there in the country. And jo free food grains hoga, that will be distributed for a period of one year starting from 1st January 2023. Ye rakhenge. Initially, uh, this, this decision has been taken for a period of one year, but of course, it will definitely be, uh, you know, extend hoga hi hoga. Okay. Now expenditure for this, the government will spend more than rupees 2 lakh crore. So a or nahi subsidy a gai hai market mein, which is this subsidy, food subsidy, uh, jis mein bilgul free dhenge ye log, to 2 lakh crore rupees se zada ka kharcha is mein hoga. And as I already told you that 5 kg food gain per person to priority household and 35 kg per month per family to the Antyodha Anna Yojana household will be provided. And yes, this Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana, which was launched during the COVID-19 pandemic and Jiska bhi 7th phase chal raha hai, the 7th phase uh, from September 2022 to December uh, 2022. Abhi iska 7th phase chal raha hai, if I'm not wrong, September 2022 to December 2022. Now this scheme, Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana has been merged with NFSA and all the Jobi Skandar beneficiaries the they will get the benef uh, benefit through NFSA only. Take it. All right. So that is all about this news. And now let's come back to the question. The correct answer will be what option B one year because for a period of one year, this provision, uh, this decision has been taken. All right. Let's move ahead to question number two. Question number two is about Rajiv Gandhi Shramik Kalyan Yojana and you have to identify the correct statement or statements about this scheme. So again, it is in news because a a parliamentary reply was submitted in the parliament. So let's talk about this scheme. What is the scheme? So as the name says, Rajiv Gandhi Shramik Kalyan Yojana. Shramik means what? Labors. And Kalyan means what? Welfare. So this scheme is a basically labor welfare scheme. Labor welfare scheme. Now what type of welfare is this? Ye kis type ka welfare hai? So this welfare is provided to the laborers in the form of unemployment allowance. Right? This welfare is what? the unemployment allowance which is given to the laborers. So the objective of the scheme is to provide unemployed unemployment allowance to the insured person for a maximum period of 24 months. Okay? This allowance is being given for a maximum period of 24 months. In case, there are three cases. 
ठीक है इन विच दी अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट अलाउंस विल बी प्रोवाइडेड नंबर वन ही और शी द लेबर ही और शी मीन्स वॉट लेबर द लेबर बिकम्स अनएम्प्लॉयड इन वॉलेंटरली ड्यू टू रिट्रेंचमेंट Now, what is the meaning of retrenchment? Remember, retrenchment is defined under Industrial Dispute Act of 1947, and the termination, the termination of employee, the termination of employee due to any reason, due to any reason which does not include disciplinary action. Disciplinary action के अलावा अगर किसी भी reason से किसी एम्प्लॉय को टर्मिनेट किया जाता है देन दैट इज नोन एज व्हाट रिट्रेंचमेंट आई होप द वर्ड रिट्रेंचमेंट इज क्लियर लेट मी रिपीट इट द टर्मिनेशन ऑफ एन एम्प्लॉय ड्यू टू एनी रीजन और एनी सरकमस्टांस एक्सेप्ट डिसिप्लिनरी एक्शन दैट दैट रीजन शुड नॉट इंक्लूड डिसिप्लिनरी एक्शन देन दैट वुड बी नोन एज वॉट रिट्रेंचमेंट राइट एंड इट इज डिफाइंड अंडर आई डी द सेकेंड केस इज क्लोजर ऑफ द फैक्ट्री और एस्टैब्लिशमेंट As defined under again IDA 1947, this should be 1947. And permanent invalidity of not less than 40 percent arising out of non-employment injury. Right. So these are the three cases where the unemployed insured person will get the benefit, will get the unemployment allowance. Right. It was launched in 2005 by Ministry of Labour and Employment. And remember, the nodal agency to implement this scheme is Employees State Insurance Corporation, which is ESIC. All right. Now these are some eligibility conditions under which the insured person will get the benefits. So the insured person should be in service for a period which is minimum two years, right? Minimum two years. Or ये जो two years हैं किस तरीके से calculate होते हैं? Let me tell you this. If the contribution is for a period of one fifty six days, right? Out of three sixty five three sixty five days. If the contribution given by the insured person, because of course ये SIC में क्या होता है? दोनों को देना पड़ता है. Government भी uh, employer भी देता है, employee भी देता है, right? So if the contribution of employee is for uh, greater or equal to 156 days, then it is considered as the employment for full one year, right? अगर 156 दिन तक उसने contribute किया है in the SIC, then that is considered as a one full year period. While if the contribution Is for a period of seventy-eight days or more, then it is considered as employment for half year. Okay. The insured person and his or family are also entitled for the medical care, right? And unemployment allowance shall cease to be payable in case the person gets the re-employment or he or she attains the superannuation or sixty years of age, whichever is earlier, right? So, ये जो unemployment allowance है ये खत्म हो जाएगा ये बंद हो जाएगा कब दो cases में नंबर वन या तो उसको नौकरी मिल गई ही गेट्स द इंप्लॉयमेंट राइट एंड नंबर टू ही हैज अटेंड द सुपर एनुएशन एज यानी कि 60 साल या उससे ऊपर का वो हो गया ठीक है तो इन दैट केस दिस अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट अलाउंस शैल सीज टू एग्जिस्ट ऑल राइट एंड व्हाट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट अलाउंस फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ फर्स्ट ट्वेल्व मंथ सी द मैक्सिमम पीरियड फॉर विच द अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट अलाउंस इज गिवेन इज वॉट ट्वेंटी फोर मंथ राइट नाउ आउट ऑफ दिस For the first twelve months, the unemployment allowance is fifty percent of the average daily wages. While for the last twelve months, it is twenty-five percent of the average daily wages. All right. I hope, guys, this scheme is clear. And now let's come back to the question. Let's identify the correct statements. All right. It is being implemented by Minister of Labour and Employment since two thousand and five. Absolutely correct. There is no problem in it. The nodal implementing agency is EPFO, not EPFO. It's ESIC. So this statement is incorrect. And for the first twelve months, daily rate of unemployment allowance is fifty percent of the average daily wages drawn by the insured person. बिल्कुल सही बात है. And for the last twelve months, it is twenty-five percent of the average daily wages. ठीक है. So one and three should be the correct answer. Option C. And now let's talk about question number three. When was the third edition of ASEAN India Grassroots Innovation Forum 2022 organized by ASEAN Committee on Science Technology and Innovation which in short is known as COSTI in partnership with Department of, uh, Department of Science and Technology Government of India and National Innovation Foundation which is again is a foundation from India right so aapko bas yahi batana hai ki ye kahan pe hua hai so it was organized in from pen in Cambodia from pen in Cambodia right and it was organized by costi which is asian committee on science technology and innovation in collaboration with 
इंडिया डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एंड नेशनल इनोवेशन फाउंडेशन इंडिया और राइट नाउ कैन यू टेल मी वेर आर दी हेडक्वार्टर्स ऑफ आसियान लेट मी आस्क यू दिस क्वेश्चन वेर आर दी हेडक्वार्टर्स ऑफ आसियान राइट डाउन इन दी कमेंट सेक्शन एंड यस दीज दे वॉज अ कॉम्पिटिशन ग्रास रूट इनोवेशन कॉम्पिटिशन जिसमें फर्स्ट प्राइज वॉज गिवन टू मिस शालिनी कुमारी फ्रॉम इंडिया ठीक है यह सब कुछ याद रखने की जरूरत नहीं है जस्ट रिमेंबर इन दी ग्रास रूट इनोवेशन कॉम्पिटिशन फर्स्ट प्राइज वॉज गिवेन टू मिस शालिनी कुमारी एंड ये भी मैं याद करने के लिए इसने बोल रहा हूं बिकॉज दिस पर्सन इज फ्रॉम इंडिया ओके एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट इंडिया आसियन इंडिया ग्रास रूट इनोवेशन फोरम तो एज द नेम से Uh, the objective of this forum is to promote and strengthen the development of grassroots innovation ecosystem very simple organized by costi in partnership with dst and nif it comprises of seminar session webinars etc and the first two forums were organized in 2018 in indonesia and the next the second one was organized in 2019 in philippines okay so this time the third edition took place in phnom penh in cambodia right do remember the name of country as well cambodia is the correct answer option b moving ahead to question number 4 where was ai pe charcha ai pe charcha means ai pe discussion discussion on ai dialogue on ai right organized by negd which is national e governance division to discuss the importance of and approaches for enabling access to quality data data sets for ai's modernization program so the world is moving towards ai and so we are so that is why this uh, ai pe charcha was organized by negd national e governance division which works under ministry of electronics and it headed by ashwini vaishnav right and objective of course as the name says it was a discussion on how we can improve the ecosystem of artificial intelligence and how we can inculcate the ai into the startup ecosystem into the tech into the innovation and everywhere right now remember this ai pe charcha was initiated as part of india's first global ai summit responsible ai for social empowerment right there was a summit which was conducted which was organized by ministry of electronics and it in 2020 which was known as raise and raise stands for what responsible ai for social empowerment and during this uh, summit the idea of ai pe charcha was conceived okay so where did this ai pe charcha take place so it took place in new delhi option c is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 5 very important question again national health authority has announced a digital health incentive scheme for the stakeholders of the digital health ecosystem now can you tell me again one more question i would like to ask here who is the ceo of national health authority can you write down in the comments who is the ceo of nha so nha has announced a digital health incentive scheme for the stakeholders of digital health ecosystem it aims to give a further boost to digital health transactions in the country under ayushman bharat digital mission which of the following entities will receive the incentives under this newly introduced scheme all right so let's talk about it what is the scheme what type of incentive is this and who will get the incentives so this, this is digital india uh, health incentive scheme digital health incentive scheme right and as the name says some kind of incentives will be provided under the scheme right the objective is to give a boost to digital health transactions right to what to digital health transactions in the country under ayushman bharat digital mission and for this a total amount of rupees 50 crores 50 crores has been allocated for a period of 6 months starting from 1st of january 2023 right now which are the beneficiaries so incentives will be provided to these beneficiaries number 1 health facilities having 10 or more beds number 2 laboratory or radiology diagnostic centers and number 3 digital solution companies which are providing ayushman bharat digital mission enabled digital solutions all right and remember uh, these beneficiaries will be given the financial assistance up to rupees 4 crores kitna 4 crore rupees tak ka diya jayega based on the number of digital health records that they create and link to the mission which is ayushman bharat digital mission all right so that is all and now let's come back to the question again 
So who are the beneficiaries? Health facilities having 10 or more beds, laboratory diagnostic centers and digital solution companies. Option E, A, B and C will be the correct answer. Let's move ahead to question number uh, 6. This is again an interesting question. Computerization of land records has been completed in more than 94% villages of the country under Digital India Land Records Modernization Program. So you have to identify the incorrect statement about this program. All right. Very interesting question. It can be asked in your exam it, because it is a major social issue in the country. Okay, land reforms may question up to you. So Digital India Land Records Modernization Program, as the name says, the objective of this program is to digitize the land records. Right, jo land records hai, usko digitize karna. Right, and of course, there is a scheme as well for this PM Swamitva. I hope you all uh, remember the scheme PM Swamitva. The objective of PM Swamitva is also similar to this Digital India Land Records Modernization Program. So what is the objective? Let's read it. To develop a modern, comprehensive and transparent land record management system with the aim to develop an integrated land information management system. So basically, uh, the idea is to digitize the land records so that we can have an integrated land information management system. All right. It was launched in 2008 as National Land Record Modernization Program, which was revamped, which was revamped as a central sector scheme in the year 2016. All right. It has been recently extended for a period of uh, for the period of 15 financial years, starting from 21-22 and ending to 25-26. Funding 100% for center because now it is a central sector scheme, right? <coughs> I hope you know the difference between central sector and centrally sponsored. Central sector schemes are those in which 100% funding is provided by the central government, while centrally sponsored schemes are those in which there is a uh, you know sharing. There is a sharing between center and states, right? This is the difference. Moving ahead. So implementing ministry, of course, must be the Department of Land Resources, which works under the Ministry of Rural Development, headed by Giriraj Singh. And these benefits will be provided through this, are being provided, in fact, through this program, which are, it provides real-time information on land. It optimizes the use of land resources, because if I know uh, you know about my land then of course I can use it as a resource for example I can take a loan against that land right and use it for my capital uh, generation benefits both landowners and protect uh, prospectors assist in policy and planning and helps to reduce land disputes okay now pehle to kya hota tha ki yaar ek gao hai usme char bhai hai ab wo charo bhai aapas mein lad rahe hai ki ye mera ye mera ye mera ye mera to ab kya hoga jab digitization ho jayega so, उससे इन चारे भाइयों की जो लैंड डिस्प्यूट है वो खत्म हो जाएगी ठीक है नाउ सिमिलर टू दिस देयर इज द यूएल पिन आई होप यू हैव हर्ड ऑफ दिस यूनिक लैंड पार्सल आइडेंटिफिकेशन नंबर राइट जैसे हमारा आधार कार्ड नंबर है वैसे ही द गवर्नमेंट इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग इज एलोकेटिंग यूनिक लैंड आइडेंटिफिकेशन नंबर ठीक है तो व्हिच इज नोन एज व्हाट यूएल पिन यूनिक लैंड पार्सल आइडेंटिफिकेशन नंबर लैंड पार्सल मींस अ पीस ऑफ लैंड Land parcel means what? A piece of land. So it is a 14 digit alphanumeric unique ID for each land parcel based on geo coordinates of the vertices. Geo coordinates ka matlab longitudes and latitudes. Theke? It contains ownership details of the plot besides its size, longitudinal and latitudinal details. Theke? Ki uski location actually ka kya banti hai? It facilitates real estate transactions. Help to resolve property tax, uh, taxation issues, everything, right? And so far, it has been rolled out in 24 states and UTs. Okay. So that is all about this program, and let's identify the incorrect statement. It was launched in 2008 at, as National Land Record Modernization Program. Correct. It was revamped and converted as a central sector scheme in 2016. Correct. It is being implemented by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Is that so? No. It is being implemented by Ministry of Rural Development. So, option C is the correct answer. Option C is the correct answer. Question number 7. Pe jate hai. It is about the TULIP program, which is the Urban Learning Internship Program. It was launched in 2020 uh, by Ministry of Housing and Affairs in collaboration with Ministry of Education. And it is a platform to provide internship to students and graduates in urban local bodies or the smart cities of the respective states or UTs. 
द क्वेश्चन इज इट इज बींग इम्प्लीमेंटेड बाय विच टू मिनिस्ट्रीज आई थिंक मैंने आपको आंसर ऑलरेडी बता दिया है लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इट एंड देन वेलकम अगेन टू दी क्वेश्चन सो दिस प्रोग्राम दी अर्बन लर्निंग इंटर्नशिप प्रोग्राम इट इज बींग इम्प्लीमेंटेड बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स इन कोलेबोरेशन विद मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड ए आई सी टी ई विच इज ऑल इंडिया काउंसिल ऑफ टेक्निकल एजुकेशन इट वॉज लॉन्च इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एज अ प्लेटफॉर्म टू प्रोवाइड इंटर्नशिप टू द स्टूडेंट्स एंड ग्रेजुएट्स इन अर्बन लोकल बॉडीज एंड स्मार्ट सिटीज इन द रिस्पेक्टिव स्टेट एंड यूटीज और राइट नाउ रिमेंबर दिस प्रोग्राम इट इज बेसिकली अ पार्ट ऑफ द विजन ऑफ ए आई सी टी ई which is 1 crore successful successful internship by the year 2025 so there is a goal of aicte that it wants to create you know it wants to give 1 crore internship opportunities by the year 2025 it is a part of it and till now ye information hai since the launch of tulip program so far more than 25000 internship opportunities have been advertised of which more than 5000 internship have been offered of which more than 3500 have been completed so this is about the uh, you know abhi tak ka jo iska success hai uske bare mein hai this is not important for your examination right so therefore the correct answer will be what a and b option d will be the correct answer question number 8 which is about startup india seed fund scheme so isko humne kai baar discuss kiya hai but for those who are new let's discuss it once again Startup India Seed Fund Scheme was launched in 2021 with an outlay of 945 crores. So, बाकी इसके बारे में है. Let's jump to the question directly. Which ministry is implementing this scheme, right? So, remember this scheme was launched by Ministry of Commerce and Industry in 2021 to provide financial assistance to the startups for <coughs> prototype development, <coughs> product trials, market entry, and commercialization. the total outlay is 945 crores and as i told you it is being implemented by ministry of commerce and industry its duration is up to financial year 2025 and the nodal committee or you can say nodal body to implement this program to to execute this program is experts advisory committee which has been constituted by the central government and this committee <coughs> has the overall responsibility of execution and monitoring of the scheme and it evaluates and selects incubators for funds under the scheme okay so i hope this scheme is clear so which ministry is this it is ministry of commerce and industry headed by piyush goyal and he is also the leader in rajya sabha and now let's talk about the questions in short which uh, do not need much explanation but before that if you want to have the pdf of this session you can join the telegram channel The link is provided in the description. This is the Telegram channel by the name Anujindal dot in. And if you want to ask anything related to examination, you can follow me here. Question number nine. पे आ जाते हैं. Headquarters of which organization was awarded prestigious Grah Exemplary Performance Award 2022, a top national level green building award? तो ये कोई नई बात नहीं है. ये बहुत पहले award मिल चुका है. But again, it is in news because कोई शेख reply में ये एक छोटी सी बात लिखी हुई थी. So I picked it up. so these awards this award was given to the headquarters of uidai unique identification authority of india question number 10 the defense acquisition council headed by defense minister rajnath singh currently has approved 24 capital acquisition proposals of total value of this much crore but the question is not this question is what percentage of this proposals will uh, be procured from indigenous sources so 78.98% of the procurement will be done from the indigenous sources which is a very you know uh, motivating news for us option b is the correct answer india under its updated nationally determined contribution ndc submitted to unfccc in august 2022 has committed to reduce emission intensity of its gdp by 45% by 2030 from Which years level? मतलब किस लेव किस ईयर से कंपेरिजन में फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट हम कम कर देंगे सो वी आर कंपेरिंग इट विद टू थाउजेंड एंड फाइव लेवल ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर गाइज टू दिस क्वेश्चन आई होप दिस इज ऑल्सो क्लियर नेशनल कॉन्क्लेव ऑन टेक नी वैट सेवेंटी फाइव इज द कल्मिनेशन ऑफ द ईयर लॉन्ग टेक नी वैट सेवेंटी फाइव प्रोग्राम सो नाउ दिस प्रोग्राम हैज एंडेड हुड ऑर्गेनाइज दिस प्रोग्राम सो इट वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज बाई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ अर्थ साइंसिस 
मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एंड काउंसिल ऑफ साइंटिफिक एंड इंडस्ट्रियल रिसर्च ऑल थ्री ऑप्शन ई विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर अगेन ए बी एंड सी एंड द लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर टूडे विच पोर्टल हैज बिन लॉन्च अंडर सेंट्रल सेक्टर स्कीम नेशनल बी कीपिंग एंड हनी मिशन फॉर ऑनलाइन रजिस्ट्रेशन एंड डेवलपिंग द ब्लॉक चेन सिस्टम फॉर ट्रेसिबिलिटी ऑफ सोर्स ऑफ हनी एंड अदर बी प्रोडक्ट सो दिस इज अगेन नॉट अ न्यू पोर्टल इट वॉज लॉन्च लास्ट ईयर and the name of this portal is madhu kranti portal last year or i believe it was in 2020 that it was launched right so the name is what madhu kranti portal theek hai madhu means uh, sweet and kranti means what revolution madhu means honey 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 revolution portal all right guys so that's it for today's session i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section thank you so much for watching goodbye take care and god bless